Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Taste of Torah study of Parsha Toldot. We're going to be moving on to this week's Torah portion, uh, which tells us about the conflict between the two brothers, Esau and Jacob. I'm going to begin by sharing with you a little bit of uh, what the Bible itself has to say, and then we'll go on and talk. Um, the Eternal said to her, that is to their mother, Rebecca, uh, two peoples are in your belly. Two nations shall branch off from each other. They emerge from your womb. One shall prevail over the other. The elder shall serve the younger. And the time came for her to give birth. Lo, she had twins in her belly. The first came out reddish all over, as though covered with a hairy mantle. And so they named him Esau. And his brother, following, came out uh, holding Esau's heel. So they named him Yaakov, Jacob, the one who was the heel. Isaac was 60 years old when they were born. And when the boys grew up, Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the outdoors. But Jacob became a homespun man, keeping to the tents. So... The Bible reveals to us both negative and positive qualities about both of our ancestors, Jacob and Esau. Uh, but without question, uh, our tradition emphasizes the negative qualities of Esau and the positive qualities of Jacob. Uh, Esau is uh, a true Texan. Uh, he's a camouflage guy. He's out there in the wilderness, out on his lake boat. He's uh, experiencing uh, the outdoors and enjoying it. Uh, while um, Jacob is the gentle person who stays in the camp, who uh, helps his mother out, uh, who is uh, more sedentary, maybe more urban. And uh, that's the characterization the Bible gives to us. Um, it gets a little more complicated because Esau also proves to be a very passionate person. You know, when he learns about how Jacob has stolen his blessing from his father, he becomes enraged and he plans to kill Jacob. Yet, when Esau and Jacob unite several chapters later, Esau, with apparently equal passion, uh, ran to meet him and embraced him and fell upon his neck and kissed him. And they both burst into tears. So Esau is a very passionate character, whereas Jacob is a little more introspective, calculating perhaps, uh, a little bit more manipulative. Uh, Jacob is described as a mild man. Uh, the earlier translation I used said homespun, but a, a satisfied man, a comfortable man uh, who cleverly acquires the birthright from a hungry Esau and who, uh, in their father's words, came with deceit and took away your blessing. That's talking about Esau's blessing. Uh, our Torah portion illustrates the striking difference between the natures of the two brothers setting the stage for later contrast between Israel and surrounding societies, and then Israel and its enemies. Uh, have no doubt about it. Um, Jewish tradition sets up Esau in a negative light compared to his brother. Aside from God's providence and Esau's angry uh, threat, Esau really actually doesn't do a great deal to merit uh, his negative assessment in later Jewish tradition. Uh, the Bible identifies him as the father of a related and neighboring tribe, the tribe of Edom and Amalek, uh, two tribes that were eventually to become serious enemies of the Hebrews. Uh, the Rabbis go even further in connection. They connect Esau and Edom to the Romans, thereby linking Esau to uh, oppression and the destruction of the temple and the end of Jewish sovereignty. Uh, the Midrash goes on and describes him as an idolater and a murderer and uh, someone who, worst of all, 
spoke disrespectfully to his father. So um, all of this gives us a very negative, cumulative interpretation of Esau. Um, perhaps we needed in the times of our struggle to set up a clear and compelling contrast uh, between ourselves and those we considered to be our ethnic and religious rivals. Um, so Jacob becomes the perfect yeshiva student. He's uh, studious and thoughtful and God-centered and Torah-engaged, whereas Esau is angry and violent and dangerous. Um, and that's been the way we've been doing it for quite some time. Now, uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, we gave up certain desirable qualities by, uh, you know, uh, highlighting Esau as an evil character. Uh, outdoorsmanship, um, passion, uh, enthusiasm gets uh, de-emphasized in favor of intellectualism and uh, education and the other things that we tend to value now. We've had a bit of a reassessment of that in the past century. You know, Zionism came in and part of what it, it brought to, that was new to the Jewish experience was a critique of the traditional rabbinic interpretation of what it was to be a Jew. Uh, it's okay to be educated, it's okay to be an urban oriented person, but the Zionists really also wanted us to be physical Jews, self-reliant, self-sufficient, uh, capable of not only interpreting a verse of Talmud, but also planting a field. And so we have been moving towards what I think is probably a more healthy uh, sense of what it is to be Jewish. Uh, we have made room, at least now in our minds, where something of the positive qualities of Esau are ready to be adopted by us. Our children here in America, we teach them to be active. Uh, we encourage them in things like uh, gymnastics and dance and sports, as well as wanting them to be very successful students. So perhaps what we need is a new, more respectful interpretation of our ancestor Esau. No, he isn't uh, in our direct line of Jewish descent. And yet, as the, um, as the colorful, active, interesting Gentile uncle, he teaches us and shares, us, shares with us certain values that we should embrace. Uh, to be skillful, to be outdoorsmen and women. Uh, we should find a way to make a balance of what we do and bring that into our own lives and the lives of our children. Well, that's it for now. And that's uh, told out. I look forward to sharing something with you next week.